On May 1st, 1999, United Plankton Pictures and Nickelodeon created the show SpongeBob SquarePants and shown it to millions of TV sets around the world. After that day, SpongeBob ballooned into one of the biggest cultural phenomenons of all time. But unfortunately, on November 26, 2018, Steven Hillenburg, the creator of SpongeBob SquarePants, passed away. After the announcement, Nickelodeon had announced two SpongeBob spin-offs, which we now know as Camp Coral and The Patrick Star Show. Camp Coral itself would get a big presence in the third SpongeBob movie. Now, people believe that Nickelodeon waited for Steven Hillenburg to die to go forward with these projects. I've seen countless videos of people saying that Sponge on the Run was just a backdoor pilot for Camp Coral, it sucked, and it spinned the face of Hillenburg. But that's not the case. I think it's time to discuss the Spongebob spin-off debacle. The Billion Dollar Sketchbook, in my opinion, is a really important piece of Spongebob media, as it explains the development of Sponge on the Run and Cam Coral as a whole. But besides that, this article also explains the development of Spongebob as a whole and Hillenburg's battle with ALS. I'll put a link to the article in the description below, and I highly, highly encourage you to read it. It's a very fascinating read for any Spongebob fan. But for right now, I think I'll read word for word what the article said. Two years ago, with Steve beginning to fall ill, Karen Hillenburg called Tim Hill and asked him to work with Steve on developing the script for the third Spongebob Squarepants film. With Steve's health failing and the cartoon about to celebrate two decades, Hill initially recoiled at the pressure. The moment seemed to represent, I didn't want to be the guy who screws this up, he told me. Steve had an idea for the plot, and over the course of a few meetings, Hill relented and wrote the treatment. One thing led to another, and Hill's now the director, which seems fitting. It's a rescue story. Spongebob must save his pet snail Gary, who has been taken by bad guys who want to harvest his trail of slime as a valuable skin treatment, Hill said. Hill and I spoke for an hour, a conversation marked by gratitude, awe, and humor about his journey with Steve and Spongebob. Ultimately, he explained he agreed to direct the film to honor his friend. The story is nostalgic, Hill said. Steve is actually in the story, a fitting first for the cartoon. He paused and added haltingly, it's basically a love letter to Steve. It's a sad story, but it does tell us that Hillenburg did know about Sponge on the Run and helped develop the story for the film. As for Cam Coral, there have been tweets and interviews where they directly say that Hillenburg was involved with the development of Cam Coral, but unfortunately wasn't able to see the final product. In the interview with Tom Kenny and Roger Bumpus, Tom Kenny even said that Hillenburg was a bit iffy with the CGI, but soon grown to like it when the producers showed off what it could do. Case in point, Hillenburg knew about Sponge on the Run in Cam Coral. The only spin-off Hillenburg did not know about was the Patrick Star Show, which was developed after he passed away, and the upcoming Sandy and Plankton films. You still don't have to like Cam Coral, you still don't have to like Sponge on the Run. Well, what about the interview he did where he said he didn't like spinoffs? Well, in that interview, he said that he didn't even see spinoffs happening, not that he didn't like the idea of them. Now, in the Billion Dollar Sketchbook, they talk about going to the campfires a lot, the Baja Blast campfires. And that kind of puts Cam Coral in a new light for me. Because it makes me think that Camp Coral, in some way, is based on the campfires Hillenburg and his friends would have. Also, I saw Paul Tibbetts tweet about Camp Coral, but in the Art of Spongebob Q&A he did, he talks about how he likes the current direction of the show and the Patrick Star show, so... Yeah, take of that what you will. I've also seen some comments where people feel like, like, the crew members are being forced to make these shows against their will. They're not. They can leave at any time. It's just a job. 
they, they, they could just leave. The last point I want to make is don't be dicks to the Spongebob crew. Like, I get being mad at Nickelodeon, the mega corporation, because there's a lot of people upset over mega corporations. Like, I, 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 I really couldn't care less if you hate Disney or whatever. Not my problem. But I do have a problem when you're just being mean to crew members who really don't have any control over the situation they're in. So, I'm just gonna say it up front, don't be dicks to the crew members because they have no control over what Nick does to Spongebob. And you being dicks to them isn't going to change what Nickelodeon does. So, uh, yeah, be better people. Adios.